Okay, so this is a video of the Galaxy PVI case we performed in a uh, EP lab in Split uh, in late November 2020. Um, you will have uh, four panels here in the left upper corner. You're gonna be able to see character manipulation. It's a usual setup we use for a Navix assisted uh, PVI case. So from the left groin, we put up uh, the standard decapolar character for the uh, to serve as a reference character for a mapping system. And uh, from the right groin, we go with a intracardiac echo character and a transeptal sheet. You see here that uh, we are doing uh, uh, transeptal under ice. In the right lower corner, you'll be having a ice image for throughout the procedure. In right upper corner, you're gonna have uh, uh, display from the mapping system, and then you're gonna have in the, low, in the left lower corner, you're gonna have uh, uh, recording system and also floral, floral image. So once we obtain uh, left atrial access, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, talking about a regular case here. This is a patient number 23 in our experience uh, in Eclipse AF study. Uh, uh, it, uh, by that time we opted to, uh, to do uh, the setting as, as uh, is shown here. So after obtaining left atrial access, we are uh, entering the left atrium with the standard lasso catheter and we are collecting uh, 3D left atrial geometry with a lasso catheter. Uh, at this point prior to ablation, we are not that much concerned about voltage map. We just want to have good anatomy. Once we have a reasonable left atrial geometry with a lasso, uh, this would be our standard uh, workflow with an, like any other Navix case. Uh, we'll, uh, since uh, we're just uh, using impedance, uh, impedance principle here to acquire map, we're gonna refine our map by uh, uh, introducing uh, the magnetic sensor enabled uh, ablation character. In this case, it is Tacticat sensor enabled. It's a contact force sensor uh, counter force sensing character. So uh, by doing, uh, by investing a couple more minutes uh, to improve the, the accuracy and stability of the map, uh, we are uh, we are giving us uh, putting us in a position to have a smooth workflow later on in the procedure. Uh, I think it's uh, typical for any Navix assisted procedure, and especially here since the PFA application per se. Can you know mess up with uh, uh, with the uh, principles how the system works, and uh, later on, as we will show, when patients start coughing, uh, which is also uh, intrinsic for any PFA platform uh, for the delivery of certain quadrants around the veins, especially in the left superior, uh, the map tends to uh, the map tends to be unstable or shift, or you gotta wait for uh, for a recovery sometime. So here we are showing that uh, we're gonna improve uh, our map. We are entering all the PVs with a uh, ablation character. Uh, once uh, we visit all the area of interest in left ATM, uh, the technician will uh, uh, lock down the geometry and prepare ourselves for the ablation. So here we are. We are uh, we start our ablation in uh, usually in a superior posterior segment of the left superior. Uh, so our intention is to do uh, like any other point-by-point uh, -point PVA case, whether we do it with a with a car system, whether you're here with the Navix, we're gonna encircle uh, ipsilateral vein in pair. So we're gonna do uh, two Waka set lesion sets, left and left and right. So uh, please do understand that uh, because the Centauri generator is not coupled yet with a with a with a Navix, uh, the lesion annotation has to do be performed manually. So your your uh, your EP lab technician will have to uh, work work it out with you, and uh, we're we're tagging this manually. So here, uh, uh, prior to him in, uh, as an operator, when I'm satisfied with the position, I uh, call him to make a tag. Here is a five millimeter tag. He, uh, you have to understand that uh, within uh, Eclipse AF study. Uh, we already tested three different dosing strategies, and uh, of course, three different uh, three different uh, the uh, lesion tag settings. Here we are applying so-called high dose, and it's gonna be a single waveform configuration, single pulse configuration, a single so-called high dose for all the 
all the you know quadrants around the wing. So we applied the first lesion. During the application, you saw that uh, we we lost the uh, image of the catheter. That's that's why because uh, we realized that by by shutting shutting off the unguide, uh, we improved the uh, we improved the. Uh, uh, subsequent you know uh, recovery of the system so as soon as we apply uh, the lesion as soon as we apply the uh, pulse uh, the technician will turn on the on guide then we have to wait for the recovery since uh, we had a coughing during this application as I said that's something that we see across all the platforms uh, we'll have to wait for a couple more seconds to, uh, for the system to uh, to get to the point where there is a complete recovery and so this is uh, this is uh, uh, causing some delay in the workflow, but you know it's uh, probably specific to the this system we are using, Impinus based. Once we get rid of coughing, uh, you will see that uh, you know uh, that uh, we stack those uh, lesions uh, very quickly. Uh, as you will see here, that uh, pulse configure pulse is uh, uh, here uh, the pulse application and uh, pulse field ablation delivery is synchronized to QRS. So please mind, this is a solid tip catheter. We are applying monopolar uh, pulse field ablation and it is, you know, and uh, so the energy is going from the tip of the catheter to a uh, uh, indifferent patch. It's a big path in between. Uh, uh, a lot of things can, uh, you know, a lot of, lot of things can uh, decide and uh, influence on a final, you know, uh, energy transfer to the tissue. Uh, so anyway, just for a theoretical reason that uh, uh, we couldn't use VF with a monopolar application across the myocardium, uh, this uh, this application is synchronized to the QRS. You will see here. Again, we are now uh, uh, we are we are not getting any coughing problems here. So we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, stack up those lesions fast and uh, you'll see that it really resembles what most of us see every day in our labs uh, for our point-to-point -point PVI procedures. Uh, we thought that from the beginning of the study we thought that it's very important to uh, to, uh, to have this counterforce force sensing uh, ability just to remove another variable, you know, in the whole process, you know, understanding uh, how do we affect and how do we have uh, create uh, acute and uh, and then durable lesions. Uh, uh, make no mistake that uh, PFA effect is dependent on a contact with the tissue. Uh, well, it is dependent with, uh, you know, the character tip uh, or the, the source of the PFA has to be in the vicinity of the, of the tissue that you want to ablate. And uh, there's no better there's no better uh, marker of the good uh, of the vicinity than the contact force contact force sensing uh, and uh, understanding that you are really delivering uh, during uh, during your contact to the tissue. As you see here, you see that, uh, that during the application we have a stable contact at least here um, on the posterior part. Now we'll move on. So we invested uh, more time. We, uh, in this case, we needed uh, 20 minutes from the first to the 21 minutes from the first to the last uh, uh, point to encircle the left side. So we are done with the left waka, as you see. Our technician is already preparing, uh, preparing us to move on to the right side. It looks fair, uh, you know, the correlation of the acquired anatomy and the waka lesion set. Uh, we'll see later on the, how how will that correlate with the voltage. Here, uh, here we are um, we already performing the first lesion on the right side. Uh, on the right side, we don't get too much of the coughing, and uh, that's why uh, that's why we progress uh, that's why we progress uh, in a faster manner. Uh, you will see here that uh, you know. Um, depending on your strategy, where do you ablate first and uh, where do you ablate last, you can uh, start with any segment. We like to start with the super posterior segment around the right superior. We also tend to, uh, to uh, follow the same principle like we are, like we are following uh, for the point uh, RF cases. We are doing some identification on carina, especially posterior. Here we are uh, progressing, we are moving on, we are doing our posterior line. So. Depending on the heart rate, because the, the delivery is synchronized with the heart rate, depending on the heart rate, uh, delivery for this so-called high dose 
uh, is usually taking uh, six to seven seconds. So here we go, you see that uh, we are going repeatedly through that process, on guide on and off, tagging the lesions, trying to, you know, trying to connect all of them to make contiguous lesions. And it's pretty much easy, you know, when, the, when there's no uh, coughing, it's pretty much easy to stack them up. And as you will see here, we progress quickly. Uh, usually, uh, uh, it takes uh, less time to encircle the right side, right side veins, mostly because of the uh, uh, we're not facing any coughing problems, but also, 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 we are not having that hard time to achieve the uh, the con constant and good uh, contact on the anterior part of the anterior uh, segment around uh, left sided veins. So here we progress. One thing we encounter, one thing we encounter on the right side is that uh, we encounter a phrenic nerve stimulation. Again, it's uh, intrinsic to any PFA platform. Uh, and in our experience in Eclipse AF um, uh, study, and uh, 50 patients were treated so far, uh, it's, it, we always get it here, it's anterior segment uh, uh, in front of a uh, run inferior antrum. Uh, we always get the phrenic nerve there, at least with this, uh, with this platform. Uh, and uh, you will see now that though we having, of course, our te my uh, technician will tag those points where we have phrenic nerve stimulation. You can observe on a, on a, with a the, now the patient will have an intermittent uh, phrenic nerve capture. Now we tag those sites, and uh, it's very important to understand what's happening here. And now you will see, though we are capturing phrenic nerve with a PFA delivery. Uh, you'll see that, you'll see on fluoro, that the catheter is remaining in a stained position and uh, the constant pressure over the tissue is uh, retained here. And uh, so the conduct, though we are, um, though we are uh, stimulating the frank nerve, for this technology, it is not causing a big problem because it's not causing dislodgement. Uh, you know, and uh, the character remains stable. It is very important. And we also think that contact force sensing here also helps to uh, understand whether you are delivering at the same spot, you know, with a, with a, good, with a confident contact. Uh, now you see that once we go uh, over this region, we're gonna, we're gonna climb up, we're gonna finish the encircling the right side veins. Yes, we are uh, applying the same dose to the anterior parts and the uh, posterior parts. For the initial part, for the initial, eight, uh, for the initial uh, you know, experience, we apply the lower dose on the posterior wall. It, uh, you know, uh, but the, the lesion tag size was three millimeters. And uh, once we uh, found out that we are, we are safe, uh, that it's feasible and safe, we, and we opted to um, go with a high dose for all the regions. So here, here it is, we are uh, delivering the last lesion to encircle the right side palmy veins. My technician is warning me that I have a small gap. They are sensitive to the gap, so uh, you know, we are, we are very, uh, we are doing a, we are doing a point of RF for most of our case in our center, probably 80% of her are doing RF, and here we are. We are doing uh, we are doing the last lesion. You have you seen uh, the annotation of posterior carina. Again, reasonable uh, correlation of the waka lesion cell with anatomy. And uh, now the beauty. Uh, now we are entering. Uh, we are coming back with the lasso. We are lasso is in a position on the left superior, and as you can see on the recording system, we have uh, isolated. Uh, dissociated firing, electrical activity in a left superior. So this really, this really uh, testifies for a good antral ablation. We are sparing uh, pulmonary vein musculature extensions. We are really isolating at a very osteal, very uh, uh, antral level. So we're gonna check because uh, it's mandatory per protocol because we checked uh, we took a baseline electrograms and a pulmonary veins at the beginning of the procedure. Now we're going to check baseline PV electrogram, uh, 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 PV electrograms after the ablation, and it is it is uh, in a protocol 
of this study that uh, we have to wait for 20 minutes for a recovery. So right now you see that we are uh, finally testing the right inferior. You see with the eyes that we are not too deep. We have beautiful, uh, you know, silence on the lasso catheter, and uh, we're gonna pull our lasso. We're gonna we're gonna put up uh, advisor HD grid multipolar diagnostic catheter, and we're gonna make a voltage map in the left atrium and see for yourself how well does a, a voltage map correlate with our lesion set. So obviously, uh, nice and healthy posterior wall spared of any ablation. There's no extension. There's no extension of uh, of a lesion or injury uh, beyond beyond our uh, lesion tags. So the, it goes, uh, you know, it, it it tells you a lot that this is very precise and uh, very uh, clean energy source. Here is the final map. As you see, nice correlation, wide antral circumferential ablation and isolation of both pair of veins. We are satisfied. Overall, one hour, 30 minutes procedure, including 20 minute waiting period.